Morning chaps, we're in first thing this morning, pretty early actually, and uh, I've come to check out this fridge, and it looks like Stuart's right, it's no good. What kind of a fridge gets this cold on the outside? Look at that, it's covered in condensation, absolutely covered. So this is obviously the worst insulated stainless steel fridge on the planet. So we'll continue to run it because of course it's got the hops in. But what I'm going to do today is take those hops and put them on a pallet and put them in the cold room and we'll get rid of that fridge. I think what I'm going to do is break it down and harvest the stainless steel from it if nothing else and maybe use the doors for a stainless steel storage cupboard or something like that. We'll see. We'll split her up anyway. It seems to have a decent compressor in it though and everything else if it's getting the whole unit that cold so we might be able to find another use for all of the uh, parts from that particular unit but no good to me if it's getting that wet on the outside it's obviously faulty. So to get on with some more important jobs this morning I want to actually connect up all of the control units for the fermenters that we've uh, just clad and uh, fill the glycol baths, wire them up to the systems and in order to do that um, before we connect any electrical appliances to the tanks we need to make sure that they're correctly earthed or grounded. So we've got some M8 stainless steel um, machine bolts here and they're not exactly the right shape I would have preferred if they weren't flared and they were actual solid nuts but these will work for the job that I've got at hand. So what we're going to do is drill and tap a hole to receive a ring terminal and that ring terminal will carry an earth wire up into the control box and uh, that will give us a good ground on all the tanks and then obviously that will hook back into the main circuit board in the corner and then we can continue to hook everything else up which means that we've got electrical safety on all the tanks because they are insulated with nylon wheels but doing it this way means that um, they're grounded and if we do have any shorts like on the electric blankets or any other short at all then it will trip the system because it's got a direct route to ground so I've got a little bit of a drill bit here and some M8 taps which were kindly provided to me by a local brewer, Mr. Colin Tweed. Thank you very much, Colin. So we're gonna put these proper Dorma E500 M8 taps through their paces this morning. As you can see, I've already used this one before. And then we're gonna stick some ring terminals on and get the tanks, <clears throat> get the tanks earthed. Oh my goodness, frog in my throat.
Right, we've got all five tanks out there. They've been varnished and they're all hooked up to the electrical systems. I just need to make a few connecting cords, which is not a big deal. But I also want to start to fill up the glycol banks on all of the uh, coolers that we've got in the system. So the cooler that we use already to chill the three fermenters that are in operation, they have a 40 plus percentage of glycol in there which is uh, it's over the odds actually but that's fine if we ever need to dilute it down we can. The recommended glycol uh, percentage she's not easy, isn't she? The recommended glycol percentage is 35% glycol uh, into water so I've got a little bit of a cheat sheet here So if I kind of show you this cheat sheet, you'll see that uh, I've had it for quite some time. It's from a website, I can't remember the name of it, but if you just search Google for Brorit Glycol System Guide, this whole thing will pop up. And you can see the first time I used it here, look, uh, I've got a date of the 25th of July. 2014 which ironically is very close to today's date just five years ago uh, so what you're looking for on a glycol system is the your glycol temperature that you want to get it down to so the one I've got out there I think is minus 11 degrees well you have to have the freezing point of the glycol uh, 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit below that temperature. So I work in Celsius, so I've got 14 degrees lower than the set point, so we're obviously in metric here. So if I want to run at minus 11 degrees, then my freeze point needs to be about minus 25. So uh, that means that we're gonna need a percentage of glycol for that of uh, around 45% which is quite a lot quite a lot so what we're going to do is run the new glycol systems at a more reasonable percentage so we're looking at 35% there which will give us protection down to minus 16 minus 17 and that means that we can set our chillers into the negatives about minus 2, minus 3 so they've got that cool bank to pull down on and there's going to be a little bit of uh, reserved cold there should the fermenters need it. I might dial it down to 40% actually come to think of it and then at least all the glycol in the brewery is going to be the same concentration if we need to swap any from A to B. It would make more sense wouldn't it? So all that waffle that I've just given you is, uh, is pretty meaningless. But if you want to set up a glycol system then this is the information that you're going to need. And it's got a flow illustration as well, how to lay your brewery pipe work out. Um, Pro Refrigeration Incorporated if you're familiar with that no, I don't know but search for, like I say, search for that on the internet and you should find it oh, we've got an uninvited visitor 
somebody looking for a wood yard that hasn't been here since 2017. Unlucky pal. So I've taken some of the glycol and I've been measuring it out in equal parts on the scale. It's close enough. I know glycol is probably a bit heavier than water. Close enough. So we've done four kilograms of glycol to six kilograms of water and then we put it in to the glycol system and uh, I did that three times in total and the system has taken I can't quite open that with one hand you're not seeing there anyway 30 litres to brim it there we go and then what we've done is we've brought the cable out and we've teed off into two valves as you can see here these valves are controlled by this speaker cable just 12 volts is all it takes to turn these valves on or off or should I say open and close them and then they're translated down into beer line and across and into the tank you can just see there and then well that's where it comes out the, e the entrance is on the front so it's going in at the bottom of the tank pushing all the air bubbles out out at the top this particular one is looping through the chiller plate on the cone as well because that one has one this tank doesn't and then those lines are coming back in teeing in together here and diving back into the top of the chiller unit so we don't need to have the recirculation pump on the only reason I had these on was to test for leaks and there was a leak but we soon remedied that so now we're going to close the system down and whilst that closes that will also turn off the recirc pump here's a little bit of a cheeky monkey <laughs> and then if we come around the back you'll see that we've got the system is sitting at 28 degrees C at the moment it's carrying a lot of heat we're going to give that a couple of hours and hopefully we'll see that drop I've set it to minus 5 so if it gets there that'll be a bonus beautiful and clean that looks a little distraction as well I actually made this believe it or not in uh, the past half an hour just to get 
this long probe thermometer off the side. It was really irritating me just having this probe fishing around. So I made a couple of little storage areas. Hydrometer storage. Put the heavy bulb end in first and they'll never drop out. We've got pH meter and up at the top refractometer storage. Trial jar up there. Tissue. And then the storage for some other tools yet. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'll put in there. I might put the spare O-rings in there or something, we'll see. But I want to paint all this white the next day or so. So it all looks nice and uniform. Easy to clean down then, you see. So we've got my coffee ready to go tomorrow morning. A bit of Taylor's of Harrogate. Rich Italian roast number four. So we'll be having espresso first thing in the morning. We're just filling up the HLT. Gemma and I have just taken all the valves off the empty tanks, as you can see. And what I like to do is get behind all of the O-rings, clean everything manually, and then upon reassembly, we hit everything with a blast of paracetic acid as we assemble it to make sure that it's all perfectly clean and then the lid will go back on this tomorrow so the minute there's no lid on there and then we'll be hitting the whole thing with a dose of caustic then we'll take the caustic out that tank put it into that tank rinse this one out and then give it a dose of acid as well looking smart and as you can see oh I left this one turned on. Look at that. It's actually started to cool the tank. Shall we go and have a look inside what's happening? That's unbelievable, I didn't know I'd left that on. It's at minus 4.6. Oh, there's a little brucey bonus, folks. Oh, let's see if I can get this lid off. Oh, gosh. They're on tight. There we go. Oh yeah. I don't know how well this is going to show, but that one down there has got ice on it. So the bottom panel's iced up and the top panel here is covered in condensation. That's working perfectly then. Absolutely perfectly. Right, might need to change that lid a little bit, Jan. I forgot that I'd left this one turned on, look. The bottom panel's actually frozen on the inside. So we'll just turn this off. And then I want to go around the back and I'll turn all of the coolers off. But as you can see, all of them have actually got to temp. Minus 5.1. Minus 4.9 and the big boy minus 4.8. Oh, I'm really super duper chuffed. You can see the pipe work from the back. So it's all accessible from the back. Don't need to pull the tanks out. You can check for leaks as you go. I'm really pleased. We have eight fermenters that are ready to be filled with beer. Well, that's been a productive week and we're only on Tuesday. Get in. So, we're going to wrap up now, folks. Look how clean the brewery looks. I'm really chuffed with that. We're going to wrap up now and, uh, well, we'll see you all tomorrow for a brew day. We'll be making none other than the vacant gesture. Oh, what a shot.